So <laughs> while you're away, I was kind of working in a segue into talking about what moves the Knicks could make after this Cam Reddish deal. So now me personally, I look at the roster building, I say point guard, elite wing defender, and then stretch five. So if you were to build a team, Foxy, looking at this roster now, what holes do we have in this roster and what players would you try to go out and get in order to fill those holes? I like Jalen Brunson. As we talked about, I think he's the the type of point guard that this team needs. He's not – I wouldn't want Fox, no way, no how. Um, but I think – this is a kid who grew up in a, a basketball family. He understands the business. He's professional. You know, how I describe uh, Jalen Brunson is Deuce McBride with handles and a, and a higher basketball IQ. They're the same size and everything, but his, if you watch the game this week, his handles are superior. That's something Deuce has to work on, and, uh, and he's just a real, you know, the one thing you want any point guard to do is make the guys around him better. And that's why Fox and others, you, know, you brought it, we talked about Sexton. They, they, they're fast, and, you know, do all these things, but they don't make the guys around them better. I think uh, Jalen Brunson, uh, you know, and, and again, with his connections and stuff like that, I think he'd be very good fit for us. See, me, honestly, I'm, I haven't been, a, been a, a big supporter of the Jalen Brunson trade, but as we've seen RJ start to blossom, and it makes me think that we don't necessarily need to have that top five, top six point guard in the league and us, and us to excel, I've, I've, I've opened up to the idea. But still, you look at the ability to get him in free agency and it's like, oh, I don't want to pay twice. You know what I mean? We, we would have to trade. I would assume something of value for Brunson if he is a, a wanted commodity on the trade market. And then we'd have to offer him some sort of contract in the offseason in order to get our, our money's worth or our value for, you know, sending assets away for him so that to me has always been something I've, i try to stay away from when it comes to building a roster i, I always want to stay away from uh paying twice especially when it's a guy like brunson who to me doesn't really move the needle he would just be a solid addition to the squad respect that they're in a, a conundrum uh, dallas because of the contracts of porzingis and luca mm -hmm. that even though they have bird rights they can they can only extend him basically to 13.9 million a year. So uh, I'm with you. I don't want to get a point guard that's like crazy expensive, but if we can get him for 15, 17 million, point guards are important. Um, I know this is a short run, but uh, I think that he'd be, a, he'd be a, good, a good addition to the team if we can get him at the right price. I always talk about value. I wouldn't want to overpay for him, and uh, let's rock with this. But... Uh, you know, he's a few years older than Deuce, and I think, uh, like I said, I like Deuce. Everybody's heard that. I love his defense and everything, but he has. there's a reason why he was picked 36, and uh, that reason is because of his handles, his lack of speed and everything. But when you have handles, and if you watch Jalen, uh, uh, he gets to where he wants because of those handles. So hopefully if we don't make a trade over the next years, our development staff will be working. You know, Johnny Bryant, that point guard whisperer, be working with them so uh but i think he would be a good addition without breaking the bank meaning not having a uh a darren fox type of uh contract yeah john talento makes a good point he says i'd rather trade for anthony simons simons has been killing and, and i've been keeping an eye on him every uh game i got him in fantasy and i don't see why the uh the trailblazers would want to move on from him especially with you know Damian Lillard's future being in limbo he's dealing with the abdominal injury that we won't know if he'll return this season and in his absence man Simons has been balling so he's definitely somebody to keep an eye on if he's made available I just don't know if the the trailblazers would decide to do that so he'd probably be put down there with the long shots I agree with you I've watched him for a number of years and I've liked him but I also think there's a hell of a lot of similarity between IQ and Simon's game mm -hmm. you know uh so if we can nurture IQ, if he's going to be here and not used in a trade uh, that, you know, IQ, if you look at the stats, folks, I have to back off, you know, IQ has pissed me off this year is an inconsistency and stuff, but the, the stats say something different, that the Knicks are a better team when IQ's on the court. You know, there's only a few players that have done anything that IQ's done in his short career, whether three-pointers and scoring and stuff like that. So, uh I think if we just keep working with IQ that 
you know, we wouldn't have to pay for Simons. We have them already on our team. I hear you on that one. So, Foxy, how do you feel about any of the other teams I put on this list? I got Ben Simmons, De'Aaron Fox. Those are the big names that are available. You got I, the I, mid-level Jalen Bronson, Kobe White, and then you got the long shots and SGA, Murray. Yeah, I got to thank the SV Nation on Ben Simmons. When I was looking at Ben Simmons, I saw a guy that every year is like a runner-up to Rudy Gobert that he's not just all NBA t- uh, defense. He's all every year all NBA uh, runner-up for or in the mix for player of the year. So I got blinded by that, but the SV Nation and a couple of the, uh, the people in the chat on our, uh, you know, on the video that we put out, really said something that hit me. And, and God bless you, because I learned from you guys so much. They said if Ben can't handle Philadelphia, how the hell is he going to handle New York? And exactly. you know what? I love you, SV Nation. You won over Foxy, and I went. You know what? You're right. I was looking at his defense, being an elite defender, and getting eight assists with his eyes closed and everything else. But you know what? You're right, and uh, I'm backing off and saying I agree with the SV Nation. You can't handle Philly. Forget about New York. Next, forget about Ben. Oh, so thank you, oh. SV Nation. I love you. I mean, look at look at the people that have crumbled under the pressure in New York. You've got you know Julius Randle. He had his little skirmish. You had Joe Judge. He had his 11 minute press conference. It's tough out here, man. It is tough yeah, out here. You can make it here. You can make it anywhere. Hey, I think that could it. be a song. Hold on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Foxy, let's talk about some stretch fives. I think that would be another piece we can add to this team if we really want to elevate our game offensively. And you look at some of the players that are available, Miles Turner, who recently who just had to sit out, I think, because of a sore foot. So he's on the men. That may affect his trade value. You also have Valencia Yunus, who hasn't been reported to be available, but he's a stretch five. The Pelicans really aren't doing much. And if we make a reasonable offer, who knows? Maybe they might pick up the phone. Uh, but also there's, players, a key, there's a key thing with him. He's an, he's an unrestricted free agent at the end of the year. I, I think they offered him up an extension, I think. I'd have to you mentioned check. that. I, I didn't I didn't catch that uh, that see. part of it. But I but I said to myself, no different than, than uh, with Jalen Brunson, that maybe we don't have to break the bank because Dallas is saying, you know what, he's going to walk you know, at the end of the season because he knows he can make more than 13-9. So we might as well get something for him. It may not be what we wanted, but it's something. Uh, I think the same with, uh, you know, Valenciunas that, uh, you know, if he's a free agent, you know, maybe we could put together something to to get him. But again, he's a beast, man. So uh, he would give us the stretch, you know, double digit rebounds every game. So uh, I like his game. But again, everything here and Turner, we've talked about this. Uh, you and I touched on his injury history prior. Everybody loves Turner and you know, he's had foot problems in the past, and uh, that's not something you want for a big guy, man. So, uh, you already got a big deal with foot problems. Hopefully, he's past it, but hopefully, he's past it. Know. Hopefully, he's past it. But, uh, yeah. he, on paper, so, again, Turner looks beautiful, but greatest availability is your ability to, you know, ability is your availability. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. The best of, uh, yeah, the best ability is availability. I think that's the saying. Yep. So Valencia Yunus signed a two-year, $30 million contract extension. So he'll be a free agent in the year 2024. All right, cool. So to me, that's better. You know, you, you make a deal. You know how long you have him under contract for, and you don't have to pay. He's at a fixed figure. How much is that number again? He's making 14.7 in 22-23, and then he's making 15.4 in 23-24. So that's a, value. that's a beautiful yeah. contract for a guy that puts exactly. in his stats, man. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So other players, Kelly Olinick. We could have had him this year if we-, if we wanted to. Yep. Mo Bamba. He's another player could be available for first. And then long shots I have Carl Anthony Towns. Yeah. Too much for Cat. I Meaning it'd take a lot for Cat. And and again, for Bamba and stuff like that. If we can get him for, uh, hey, I'd love us if we, we could ship out in New Orleans. But who wants a guy that's been, you know, he's been a, he can't, you know, his knee's acting up again. He hasn't hardly played this guy, so I just don't see how anyone would want to take him in any trade. So we would have to, uh, you know, with our cap situation, what can we do? So uh, Bamba, you know, I like Bamba's height. Is you know, he's having a really good year. Uh, he's played well this year. Great height. He could be that stretch, but uh, I don't know if he's tough. No, he, yeah. he, he doesn't have the exact toughness I like in a player. I hear you on that one. 
And every time I make this list, I always forget about Christian Wood. He is another stretch five option out there in Houston, even though I'm I'm a little nervous about making the move for him after he had that dust up with the coach or a side. few or a few. So uh, I think there may be some character issues there, meaning if we're trying to build a culture, I don't know whether he's a good fit here. Yeah, exactly. But there are some options, and I think if you look at what the Knicks did with this cam trade, there has to be more moves. We've been saying it uh, ever since they did the deal. You know, log Burks, Fournier is a log jam. Too many players that play similar positions. So if we're going to move forward with Cam and give him some legitimate minutes and allow him to develop into the star he feels he's going to be or will be, then somebody has to be moved. And it's it's going to be, hopefully, for a player that solves one of the two positions we discussed, point guard or stretch five. Yep. And and if we hold, hold tight, you know what? We're playing well. Let's go for it. Let's see how RJ in that role and different facilitators go. So uh, we'll, we'll see. 